been believed to have a personality disorder or sick in the head and that we deserve to be beaten or to die. The queer ally life is not an easy road to travel on. Sometimes we feel abandoned. Sometimes we feel forgotten by God. In the queer community and ally community, we are frequently exiled by our own family, friends, and community. In the 6th century BCE, the Jews were on their own hard road too. They were attacked and pillaged in their home, Jerusalem, by the Babylonians, led by King Nebuchadnezzar II. Try to say that ten times faster. Many were killed in a bloodbath. Their temple was destroyed, and there were many who were killed, and those who were survived were brought into Babylonian captivity for 70 years. Israel was sent into exile by God for being sinful and breaking the covenantal contract between God and the people of Israel. Now they're in a strange land, stripped from their home. Slaving away in the heat of the sun and quenching thirst in the desert make life unbearably difficult compared to their homes by the Mediterranean Sea and the Jordan River and all the shade from the fruit trees and the olive branches. But being surrounded by Babylonian gods and appearing as if God did not keep the promises to live in their promised land the Israelites had to adapt to survive, even forcing them to worship these other Babylonian gods. They felt abandoned. They felt forgotten. It made them start wondering, does God even want us back? Does God even care about us enough to do this? Does God even love us? We ask ourselves this question all the time, don't we? Does God love us? Does God love us? Does God love us? In verse 14 of our reading, we hear Zion crying out, God has forsaken me. My God has forgotten me. We feel like this sometimes, don't we? We all experience our own Babylon every day. Well, on Mother's Day, we want to remember our mothers. And we want to remember our mothers for loving us and caring for us and giving us life. And we also want to thank the women who, though not related by blood, have brought us up and raising us up as family. And I gotta say, I'm lucky enough to have a mother who's one of my best friends and fully accepts me and fully gives me every ounce of me for who I am. And I commend all of you women in this congregation for being such incredible people and for being incredible mothers to your children. I am just so blessed to be amongst all of you here. I feel like you are all my mothers here. Your children need you. Keep doing so. Not all of us are as lucky to have such wonderful mothers. Some mothers fail to show up for their babies. Some leave their babies behind. Some mothers abuse their babies physically, sexually, or mentally. According to Just Like Us, it's a nonprofit for LGBTQ plus youth. 46% of queer young adults are estranged from at least one family member. 46%. That's a lot. That's a lot. Mother's Day is not always a happy day for some people. But hear this. When we read in our text today, can a woman forget her nursing child or show more compassion for the child of her womb? Even these might forget, yet I will not forget you. Beloved, though we may live in Babylon, we are never forgotten. We have mothers that remember us, but God especially will never forget us. We are loved by God. We are loved by God even more than our own mothers. This biblical passage we have today, 
is God's turn speaking in a conversation between God and someone named the suffering servant, who is to be the embodiment of a covenant between God and the people. For years, people have been asking, who is the suffering servant? Well, the suffering servant will set them free from the bondage of the Babylonians to return them home to Jerusalem. Though in addition, the suffering servant will set them free from bondage of sin, return them home to God. Many say King Cyrus, who is the uh, king of, uh, of Persia, uh, who defeated Babylon, that he is the suffering servant. Uh, he was the one that allowed the Hebrews to return home from Babylon to Judah and gave them funds to rebuild their temple. Many say it's Jesus, and I know Ron will definitely disagree with me on this, <laughs> but I believe that it is Jesus. In fact, Apostle Philip in Acts chapter 8 tells a eunuch this very story of the suffering servant being Jesus Christ. And Christ as the suffering servant means that he is up oh, I'm sorry, that he is upholding the covenant. He is upholding the covenant that was lost in the exile and able to give us a connection to God unlike any other. We are a witness to this covenant. And yet for so long, we didn't even know it. Yet, as I've told you before, God loves you more than your own mother. In fact, God will never even forget you because, quoting verse 16, God has inscribed you on the palm of God's hand. You are always on the forefront of God's mind. You. Yeah, you, Smithfield, the open and affirming church. You are always on God's forefront of God's mind. You are inscribed on God's hand. God remembers the promises made to you. The incarnation and resurrection of Christ is just another form of proof that God did not forget about us at all. It was upholding the covenant that God made with us so long ago, that God will forever be with us. Now, I want you all to turn your attention to this window right here, the one on the far left. Now, here you'll see Jesus in the upper room with his disciples. Now this right here is the depiction of Jesus with his disciples after the resurrection. In the sea, Jesus appears to his disciples with all of his scars. And I think that is a very powerful thing. He appeared with his scars. Those scars are a marker of his love for us writing our names down on his wrists, the size of nails. In the same way, I have God's name on my arm in the form of a tattoo of the Jerusalem cross from when I came back on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. And in the same way, all trans folks have God's names written on them in their scars from surgery made whole. Now in Christ Jesus, we are one with God. We are no longer Jew nor Gentile. We are no longer man nor woman. We are no longer straight nor gay. We are no longer cis nor trans. We are one. To be one with God shows us this covenant is fulfilled. To show us that we don't have to be in Babylon anymore. It shows us we no longer are separated by God in the exile. It shows us we are one with God. It shows us it is to show us that we are never alone. We are never forgotten. We are always loved and cared for like a mother cares for their child. And even more so, just because we are one with the queer community does not mean we are separated from God. In fact, it is the opposite. We are one with God. It 
God remembers each of us and calls us holy. God does not see a contradiction in us like many other people do. God sees something that is made whole and beautiful and full of love and acceptance. And in verse 9, as read before, God says, come out. To those in the darkness, show yourselves. We are not to hide who we are. God made us beautiful. God made us fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> Do not feel abandoned, friends. Because God loves this community more than our own mothers. God is here with this community. And God has our names written upon God's hands. Will you pray with me? Mother God, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you for your presence with us, especially when we feel abandoned and scrutinized. And we thank you for accepting all people of your creation. Help us see a brighter tomorrow, knowing that you are there on our side. We pray this all in the precious name of your Son, the risen Jesus Christ. Amen. We have to take a few minutes to recognize the Mother's Day and recognize the mothers in our midst. So would you stand? All women, please stand. Yep. All women. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to all of you. So I'm going to ask the children in our midst, which is Dana, Matt, you may think you're not children, but in this church, your children are <laughs> because you grew up in this church. And Brian and Eric, we have the carnations in the front, so I'm asking the children to hand, those of us who are needing a carnation, to hand it at the end of the service. Would you do that? Yes. Sure. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. God bless you all. Gordon wanted to mention that Josh Mulkey is turning 40 years old today, and we Tuesday. really wanted to sing a happy birthday, but we will at least give a prayer of thanksgiving for Josh. Not in your mercy. Here are our prayers. Mayor Ruth Keebler is asking for prayers for her healing. She has some blood clots showing up in her legs. So let us remember her in our prayers. God in your mercy, hear our prayers. <clears throat> I also want to mention that Connie Conley, we know her as Conley, but her official name is Cole. Connie Cole's memorial service is going to happen here at the church next Saturday, this coming Saturday, May 20th at 11 o'clock. So we have asked the choir members to come and sing. Those of you who are free to come for that service, please do come. Let us remember Connie's family in our prayers. Her children, Kimberly, David, and Jimmy. God in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Do you have any other prayer requests today? Gordon. You forgot Dana. Dana is Malcolm. Dana um, Walco is uh, Josh's wife. is recovering from surgery. And let us remember Dana in our prayers. God in your mercy. And your prayers. prayers. Thank you, Gordon. Lady. Yeah, uh, two prayers. Um, first, a prayer of thanksgiving for um, a friend who has been uh, experiencing chemo and radiation for cancer. Um, she just had her scan after those treatments, and they found no evidence of disease. And I am so, so thankful um, for that amazing outcome to her story. Um, and then secondly, also um, prayers for a very dear long-term friend um, who is struggling with infertility 
and I'm just aware of how challenging today uh, will feel for her. God will mercy here. Here are her. Liddy is going to be traveling to Scotland, so travel mercies on your way. Serena. For all the mothers in the world and all the mothers in heaven. All the mothers in the world, God in your mercy, hear our prayers. Heidi. For my lady friend, Connie, and her, her friend, he, he just had hand surgery over the weekend. Heidi's lady friend, God in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for prayer. We gather before you, O oh God, on this Mother's Day to give you thanks for the love received from our mothers and love given to our children and grandchildren, children and for generations ahead. This afternoon, many of us will be greeting our families for festive meals and celebrations with mothers, children, and grandchildren. Bless all our gatherings. We give you thanks for the love that was shown in the creation story and the promise of redemption and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We remember the words of Jesus. Because I live, you also will live. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. We take to heart the possibility of a loving relationship with Christ and all of God's people. We celebrate the diversity in our midst and honor our differences and willingness to work towards consensus building. We cry out to you, O oh God, from a world of disinformation and misinformation, people suffering because of natural disasters, train derailment, toxic chemical spills in our waters and soil, threats of war and unrest, Innocent lives being lost due to gun violence, racism, and hate. On this Mother's Day, we all seek the Prince of Peace to come into our midst and dwell with us. We lift all our brothers and sisters, siblings far and near, children and grandchildren as we recognize our mothers, grandmothers, and great-grandmothers who taught us how precious love really is to make us strong in our lives. We raise a prayer for this church and give you thanks for many of us working so hard to ensure the well-being of all of us and also to create a good worship experience for all those who come to this beautiful sanctuary for renewal in your presence. We recognize our music ministry, all those who offer assistance with the homeless shelter, food pantry, our women's fellowship creating hats and scarves with such love and care. We pray for the family of Con Con Cole, we remember Bob Mosner, who was mourning the loss of her, his sister, Christine Pangella. We pray for Dana and Mary Lou. We lift each of us at this time, seeking healing, seeking your love and hope in our lives. Hear us all. As we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, our God, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. For thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we leave those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but 
but deliver us from evil. For the eyes is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, let us continue in our worship by the receiving of our tithes and our offerings. <coughs> During the offertory, I'm going to sing a, a Sunday school hymn that was a favorite hymn of Dot Patterson. That's the mother of Dot Patterson. And I have fallen in love with this song. I actually remember singing it as a child. Brighten the corner where you are. And that ties in with much of what Axel Susan was saying this morning. And uh, so here's the song. Brighten the corner where Right on the corner where you are. Do not wait until some deed of greatness you may do. Do not wait to shed your light upon. To the many duties now never, ever near you, now be true. Right on the corner where you can you sing it? Right on the corner where you are. Right on the corner where you are. Someone far from harbor you may guide across the bar. Right on the corner where you are. Do I would be thrilled.
the benediction, for the benediction today, I have actually a blessing for mothers. Mother, your voice learning to soothe your new child was the first whole sound we heard before we could see. Your young eyes gazing on us was the first mirror where we glimpsed what we can see, what to be seen could mean. Mother, your nearness tilled the air, an umbilical garden for all the seeds of thought that stirred in our infant hearts. You nurtured and fostered this space to root all our quietly gathered intensity that could grow nowhere else. Mother, formed from the depths beneath your heart, you know us from the inside out. No deeds or seas or others could ever 